in the middle of doing this my camera decided to corrupt the file so bear with me I gotta do this all over again today is going to be doing an RSR remote start which simply means it is a remote start that is controlled by the factory key this is a 2013 town and country but any Chrysler with this style key this will work for. Today we're using the XK09 and our T harness which is a CHTH X1 and there's the dashboard this is our XK09 and harness uh, you didn't really miss much on the harness there are the two plugs that plug in and then there is three extra lines one is this purple line here the next is this blue these are the two of the three that are extra on this harness that we will be using the yellow with black line we don't use so I pull it out and basically the purple with brown line is our parking light line. It will do the MUX parking lights, which is this harness here that comes off from the parking light switch. And the MUX wire is the white with green. Notice it is the only one of that color in this harness. Uh, this harness is taped up like this. We had to open it up show you the color of the wire and I used a t-tap just to make it stand out a little more uh, the other part other end of our harness is here which is our t-tap I have unplugged the factory ignition switch harness which plugs in up here now my file corrupted when I was explaining that the pins on our harness aren't always the best on lining up so you kind of got to be gentle when you're plugging it back in but we got it plugged in so now all we have left to do is plug in this side of it and we will be ready to program but first, I wanted to explain our toggle switch. This is just a toggle switch from a directed unit. Uh, just simply on off. And I have hooked one side of it to our extra blue wire, which is the hood shutdown or safety shutdown. You can use it for either. On this, we're going to use it on a toggle switch so we can shut the module down if we need to. Uh, one side goes to the blue wire, the other side goes to ground. I just happen to connect it to our ground wire right here on our plug. And with this we can figure out if we want it off, we shut it off on the unit will activate but for programming we're going to need it on in order for the module to learn that it is a standalone remote start unit so I will finish connecting these here and then we'll go over our programming All right. So now we have this plugged in. We'll tie it all up together and make it look pretty afterwards. But uh, for right now, we just need it plugged in. Uh, again, I've taken the dash part. We'll show you how to put it back together. And you can use the reassembly in reverse order to take it apart. It's uh, actually very easy. This is everything that holds the dash in place. Three clips and four screws and there are four seven millimeter screws that hold the under dash airbag the rest of the panels are just 
held on by these clips. So, let's see if we can show you here. We have our module, and our red light is on. We will put the key in the ignition. And as we turn the ignition on, the light begins to flash slowly. We now shut the car off, and it will continue to flash until we hit unlock. Stays on solid and goes out module is now programmed. So now we will take our toggle switch and we will shut it off so that the unit will work. And lock three times. And we have start. Notice we have our parking light symbol on, meaning our parking lights are working. Parking lights are on. Now it's a very simple concept. Basically the RSR watches the vehicle's CAN system. And when we press lock three times, it sees that and it knows that as its cue to start the vehicle. Now, if we press it three more times, it shuts the vehicle down. So, factory key with a XK09 and a T harness, and you can have remote start right on your factory key. Now, I'm going to tie all this up and I'll show you where I mounted everything and then we'll show you reassemble. Alright, here we go. Now we have everything in. As I said before, here's the module. On the back side here, I used a zip tie to hold it down. You can see it right there. Then on the front side of our harness right here. I zip tied the harness to the module. The harness coming down just before our parking light hookup. One more zip tie. Following it down further just before the steering column harness goes into the steering column shroud. Use one more. And if we follow this over our T-harness, here is our factory plug, our male side, or I should say our female side of our T-harness, and our male side. And if you can see, I simply zip-tied it around through here to the other side. Keep it out of the way. Now this is away from our steering knuckle. It has a little bit of move to it, so if you put our column up or down, we're not tugging on anything. And now I'll show reassemble. This is our underdash airbag. Well, notice little two little sides here go into these slots use those as our guide we slide it in and we're in place we will 
use our four seven millimeter screws. And we will start that so the camera on the seat here. Maybe you can watch what happens. Using my drill with a seven millimeter on it, we will simply go through and put our screws back in. Next, we come to our main underdash panel. And as you can see, there are four clips on it. There's the two on this side, and the two on this side. Those clips line up here and over here. And we also have our underdash piece here that connects to the steering column. Basically just a vanity cover. These three clips will clip in to here, here, and here. They're pretty easy to do. We have our parking brake release. Or actually, I should say our hood release right here. It basically slides into place. And then we have our OBD2 plug, which will pop in here and it's much easier to put this on first and then we can get to these so we will do that and put you back down three are on. We're just now kind of hanging. Now we can do our parking brake, which as I said, it up so that it will come up through and we slide it into place. Our little plastic clip comes up and it is on and held in place. The next piece is our OBD2 plug and if you'll notice on one side we have these two little slots those will go to the side with our two slots. So we simply pop that in place and we're back in. Next, all we do is we line our clips up here, clip them back into place. Same thing here, clip them back into place, and now we go to our clips. We have these three little clips, one is right here on this side, we'll clip it into place. The next one is here just above our e-brake. one is over here by the center console. And 
those are our clips. To take it apart, you simply take those clips out. Pop our other clips out. Take out our hood release, our BD2 plug, and our vanity cover here. Our little pleather boot. And this piece will come down just like in reverse order. The four 7mm screws. The under dash airbag will come out and you can access everything. The last part we have is the side part of the dash. Which is this panel here. And to make it easier to put this back in, I recommend pulling this weather strip out. our cover, clip it into place, put our weather stripping back in, and that is that. Dash is back together, remote start works. Some of the tools you'll need, if I go over this really quickly, our panel trim tool, pair of side snips, a pair of crimpers work, and a cotter pin tool. And this whole install can basically be done with those. 7 mil. And this is my first video, so if you guys have any suggestions on what I should do differently, please let me know. Thanks for watching.